Hello everyone. Um, I am going to be talking about a very hot topic this week. And it is about the phenomenon of self-love. So I want to start off by saying I know that there are a lot of people that are like me that have gone through seasons of insecurity, loneliness, uh, anxiety, just joylessness, depression, things like that. And those are they're real emotions that have a damaging effect on your psyche, on your, on your life. When I went through, when I was in high school, I really went through that and it had a great impact on the way I looked at the world, the way I looked at myself especially, and it just wasn't good. <laughs> it was not a good time in my life. And we go through loss, we go through rejection, which I went through during that time. We go through sickness and pain and all of these type of situations that make us feel desperate and they tempt us into self-pity. We struggle with that. As humans, we struggle with self-pity. And sometimes we struggle to see anything good inside of ourselves, and even sometimes we hate ourselves. I've wondered before why God died on the cross for me. <laughs> why me? It's baffling at times to think that he did that for me. All the bad things we've done, all the failures, make us feel like we are beyond redemption, beyond forgiveness from a perfect God. I mean, he's perfect, and we know that we're not. So this self-love empowerment and this self-care message can sound especially, especially appealing to us when we're feeling weak and when we're feeling helpless. We don't like to feel out of control. We don't like to feel weak. But the point that I want to make today is that it is not self-love, self-care that we need. In fact, actually focusing on yourself only makes it worse. It's only by focusing on God that we are free to become comfortable in our own skin and confident who we are as people made in God's image. It is by focusing on God's goodness, his character, his salvation, his grace, his call to self-denial, self-crucifixion, and selflessness that we learn to see ourselves as he sees us. So before, I'm, before I go more into that, I want to quickly address this phenomenon culture of self-love. There's this idea that the most important thing in the whole world, before you can do anything else, before you can be any good to anyone else, you have got to love yourself. You've got to be confident in you and who you are. Social media celebrates this. We've seen this all over. This has been happening for decades. This is not even a brand new thing. This has been going on. And, and it's just gotten worse with social media. It celebrates us. And even Christians, even Christian people have adopted this mindset. I'm sure that you have seen it many, many times. I've seen it over and over and over and over. And every time I'm like, I don't know about that. And so there's times I've bought into it. And there's times that you've probably bought into it. You know, they say you can't love others until you love yourself. You can't care for others unless you care for yourself first. And I want to say not all of these things are inherently bad, but most of it is absolute and complete garbage. And I understand why this is so attractive. I even more understand why a non-Christian, a non-Christian would want to adopt this belief. It is a way to sound compassionate and caring and, and good while just really serving yourself. You can prioritize your own happiness, comfort, and convenience above the happiness, comfort, and convenience of other people and offer a virtuous sounding reason for doing it. It's basically a pretty face on selfishness. And I know I'm going to the extreme with it. I know you're probably thinking, well, there are good things about it. And I will go into that. I will. But really, this is just an avenue for people to choose selfishness. And they have. We have. You can protect yourself from criticism when you know you're wrong. It's a way to be arrogant and self-absorbed while sounding moral. And so it makes sense why someone who believes that this life is all that there is. Fame, money, and status is all that there is. 
So why put anyone else above yourself? If your hope and your identity is not in Jesus Christ, why wouldn't you always be looking out for what's best for you? I mean, really. But for Christians, that outlook does not hold up with how the Bible tells us to live. And the Bible never, 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 not once, commands us to love ourselves. I know there's, you're probably thinking of a scripture right now where you're like, well, that one, no. If you look at it, if you read it, it does not say to love ourselves. Never mentions self-care or being comfortable in your own skin. And again, before I go further, I want to mention there are aspects of self-love, this movement, that are valid and are biblical. We should be comfortable with how God made us and being confident and empowered through Him are Christ-like attributes. And I will go more into that in a minute. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Basically, that's saying self-love? No, no. Nope. And according to this passage, loving others requires humility, a valuing of others, and a conscious effort to put others' interests first. Anything less is selfish and vain and falls short of the standard of Christ. None of this should be taken to mean that we should see ourselves as worthless. The Bible teaches that we are created in the image of God, and that fact alone gives us great worth. The balanced biblical view is that we are God's unique creation, loved by God in spite of our sin and redeemed by Christ. In his love, we can then love others. In Psalms 139, it says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He actually took time knitting us together in our mother's wombs. Ephesians 1 says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So he had us in mind before he created the whole universe. We serve an awesome, merciful God who, even though he does not have to, loves us and redeemed us through Jesus. So that is where our confidence can come from. So I can say I am worth something because God said that I am and I find my worth in my creator, not in my parents or other people's affirmations. Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24 says, and I love this, this is such a good scripture. It says, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast in his might, let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, declares the Lord. If the scripture doesn't complete, completely call out the selfish culture and the mindset of self-love, I don't know what does. So, with all this being said, with all my disdain, disdain for this culture and this movement of self-love, I want to follow it up with a realization that our confidence, our value, our worth all comes entirely from God. Leaning on Him, leaning on His understanding is the way to be empowered and have the confidence that you need. It's not something that can be found in ourselves. It's not in me. I know that it is not in me. Nothing good is in me, basically is what the Bible says. But through God, I can be empowered and I can do what I need to do and I can do what I need to do for God. So looking at yourself and realizing the qualities and the skills that you have and then giving the glory for those things to God is the only righteous and the only biblical way to view yourself. It's not self-aggrandizing and it's not self-deprecating. It's, I was made in the image of God and he has made me a new creation. And with that, he has purchased me for something. I don't know what that is for sure. I'm in school for behavioral sciences and I want to become a counselor. Um, you know, God has given me empathy. He's given me an ability to articulate words well, and he's given me a desire to help others through counseling. But I don't know exactly where he'll take me with that. 
Those are all things that he's given me, but I don't know if he's even going to use me in that way. There's other things that he's put inside me and other doors that may open. Maybe I'll become a counselor or maybe I'll become an optometrist. <laughs> if I had to guess, it would be a counselor, but I don't know. You know, whatever it is, whatever I do, it is for the glory of God. That is what it's all about. My sole purpose on this earth is to bring glory to God. And it's liberating to recognize this. You know, it sounds, maybe it sounds crazy to some, I'm sure it sounds crazy to non-Christians, but when you think of it this way and you realize that all of it's for him, from him, it's liberating, it's freeing to recognize that it is not about us. It's not all on me. I don't have the control over my own destiny. God does. And I have to submit to him. But I don't have to worry about how much I love myself because I know that God loves me. That's all that truly matters. And so I hope I gave some insight to you on this crazy culture of self-love. And I hope that you realize how important you are and how much work that you do have through Christ, through his word. There are so many more scriptures that I could use to back up this point. But, and there's a lot more research that I want to do just being fully transparent. I'm reading a book about this and I'm wanting to find all that the Bible says has to say about self-love and about kind of going against this cultural mindset and looking into the psychology of all of it. It's very interesting to me. So I hope that this, uh, <laughs> this is basically my first thought on it and I really wanted to share it. I hope that this spoke to you and, and shined kind of a light on this. And I think this is an important thought for helping us to become more like Christ and getting further away from ourselves and further from flesh and, and closer to God. So I hope you have a great rest of your week.